Hey savvy people, let's talk about the super starter kit today from a Lego that comes with an Uno R3 board. So why is it so great that these types of kits exist? And why could this potentially be the best kit to get started learning about electronics? First off, what is this kit? This is a new kit that I've been recommending to people who want to get started with electronics. We'll open it up real quick so we can see what exactly is inside. If we look in here, you'll notice there's plenty of different modules and little electronic devices that you can mess with, including program. So we'll go through some of these. Probably the most important things this very first thing you see in the corner which is the Arduino board the Uno R3 that's a microcontroller and you can program and use it with other integrated circuits and devices that are actually included inside of this electronic starter kit so let's check out what exactly is in here I'll scoot this back a little bit let's talk about the very first thing we see this is a Lego super starter kit comes with a CD that allows you to get primed for some of the projects and includes code libraries you can of course get a download at lego.com instead most of us won't even have a CD-ROM at this point. It's interesting enough that people even do that anymore. Starting to think it'd be nice if we just got USBs instead. Something very minor. We'll pull out the Lego Uno R3 board right here, and we can see it's completely packaged up inside of an anti-static bag. We can open this up with one simple tear and have access to our brand new board. So here's what the board looks like. If we get a close up here, we can see it resembles an Arduino board and it's the Uno R3 model and can be used as a prototyping platform. Again, this is a microcontroller and we can use this to program various different things in C and be able to test our devices out. We'll continue on. So what else we have here? We have an LCD module, but let's just kind of pull things out of order here. And we'll talk about some of the other reasons that this kit is so great. So you get a little USB, which you can plug in and power your board with right here and can be connected to some other power source, whether it's a computer or what have you for a five volt power source. A ton of little jumper wires here available, all sorts of colors. That way you can color code your circuits as well as some longer leads and shorter ones, of course, depending on what kind of circuits you're building. This is always great to have. Great to see in a starter kit. There's even a little fan, which is kind of goofy because if you can make a motor spin, you can make a fan spin. I guess it's kind of nice to see stuff go around. That's fine. Continuing on, we have a stepper motor, which is a five volt DC motor, which if hooked up to one of these motor driver modules, you'll be able to run this stepper motor. And then you can see how a simple board like this can run something in the real life, which is quite fascinating. That's exciting. One of the great things about these starter kits is it gets you involved in what I like calling the mechanism. Electronics, so the mechanical electrical kind of fusion, which is something very important if there's a plan to do this professionally. I'm not so sure what this is. It looks like a knob. Maybe it fell off of something. Actually, what I'm guessing is I do see a joystick module, so I bet this is the knob off the joystick we'll see in a moment. We'll keep going through. Here's an ultrasonic sensor that can pick up on sound waves. We'll keep that aside as well. We have an LCD module here with a header on the back. Good for designing some on-screen printing and graphics. And here, this is actually the joystick. So I think this belongs to here, probably fell off. Let's put it right back on to see if we can. All right, now that we got it back on, you can see you can move the joystick around. It has, it has what seems to be a five pin header right here to communicate back to the microcontroller about position, very good. Again, these kits are becoming more and more popular. And if used properly, you can learn a ton about electronics and not just learn about the theory, but actually put circuit building into practice. And here is a small motor. This is not a stepper motor. So it doesn't seem, looks like it's got two wires. So you could hook one of these up and this is probably to uh, run the fan. If you wanted, you could put this on here and run a fan or, you know, whatever external thing you want to run off of a motor. You can with that one, a simple DC motor moving right along. This here is a power supply module that you get and it comes here since it's got some pins hanging off of it right in this styrofoam. We'll keep it in there so it doesn't scratch things up, but it looks like another way to help supply power to the board or if you need more external power for some other device or integrated circuit, you can use that second power supply in order to supply more components with power. This one here is a remote that you can access and then, and of course, make that work with the Uno as well for remote control. The next thing I see is plenty of resistors right in here. In this pack, we have, I think what it says, 120 resistors of different resistances Always great while you're making circuits, setting up some of the LEDs that also come with here. You're going to need a little bit of resistance there so you don't blow the diode. But either way, a great range of resistors. One of the most basic components of a circuit. Great to see that it comes with that. Looks like we have another jack that allows us to get power off of a battery. So let's see if we can find the battery. The battery is located in here. You have this 9 volt battery which hooks up to here. And then you can actually power on various different things with this, probably in this external power supply might be the one that actually 
can be powered up, but you can also build your own external circuits with this. So it's also nice to have a small battery. Of course, you can use other batteries if you have them. Here's something really nice is some don't come with breadboards. Breadboards are very important for prototyping and this is an Allego breadboard as well. So you can actually wire up your circuits as necessary and probably based on some of those projects that you can get from Allego. And this is a solderless board, which allows you to just use these connectors or jumpers really easily. Just put them straight in. We'll actually open up the board and here's the breadboard. And as I was saying, you can easily, well, this one's a little bent, but easily plug these in and then build your circuits accordingly. I'm getting really excited to use some of these peripherals and components that come in here. We actually have a few more wires here, which look like they're actually meant for connecting things such as buses. They call these DuPont wires. And then the next thing is, let's see what we got here. This looks like a small integrated circuit that's on a small board that they built, which is the driver module for the stepper motor. So if we pull out the stepper motor, this actually hooks right into here, and then you can run your stepper motor that way. We're amassing a bunch of objects here on the lab table, and let's take a moment to talk about a few reasons why this starter kit is so great before we go through the last few items. One reason is that you get involved with embedded programming using the C programming language, which is a great real world skill to have. Number two is there are plenty of projects on the disk or online that you can follow along. That way you don't get stuck trying to start and you can dive right in with the tutorials. Number three, these kits are relatively cheap to get your hands on. So you'll actually learn by doing instead of just by theory and not actually physically wiring something up. And that's why these kits are so nice. And this is why this kit, since it's at an entry level of around $30, $35, depending on where you get it, a very all-encompassing dive into digital electronics and microcontrollers. Number four, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different peripherals, modules, devices, integrated circuits to try out. So you're not left focusing on only one specific application and you get to learn more about things like analog circuits, digital circuits, although it's primarily digital focused, you could learn a little bit of analog here, but not a lot because it really doesn't come with a way to generate an analog signal. Anyways, but that's besides the point. We'll focus on the digital electronics portion of all this. You can also learn about switching conditions because you do get switches in here, which is awesome. And you can see how those switches affect electronics. Another great thing is with the Uno, you can read and write to GPIO pins, which is a very important concept to control many electronic controls systems and just in general a great thing to know all these projects have a very small footprint so you don't need a lot of space to work as you can tell i have a small lab here and yeah it looks like it's taking a lot of space up but that's just because i have everything spread out so much when you're really focused on one project at a time you take up a lot less space finally you get to learn some of the essential concepts which include passive devices and digital devices, such things as resistors, diodes, transistors, and even microcontrollers. Let's get down into the last few things here. We have a prototype expansion module here, so you can prototype a little bit extra here and really just make sure to expand on the Uno if you need to outside of it. Just a little small breadboard for the most part. And it gives you a little small breadboard as well as this, which can hook directly into the header of the Allego Uno R3. And if that goes on top here, I'll show you here if I bring over the microcontroller portion of it, we can hook up right into these headers up top and that will expand your signals all the way out to this extra printed circuit board with a ton of pins on there for easy access, soldering on all that fun stuff again for prototyping purposes. We'll disconnect that for now and we'll put it over on the side. Now we're running low on parts, but it's getting exciting. We have LEDs, which we can power on and use for troubleshooting purposes or testing purposes. Always great to have some LEDs laying around. We also have an integrated circuit, it looks like, with what seems to be a transistor and a photo resistor, maybe even a diode in there, just a few components. I won't dig into this, it's pretty small. Again, more components here, which these are little switches that you can actually press down, and this will allow you to be able to use switching circuits and build them. Just think of on and off for your circuit. And let's keep going here. We have a four digit seven segment display. You can use this display to display various numbers and decimals of numbers based on these seven segments. So why it's called seven segment. As you count around here, you have seven segments of lights basically that allow to be turned on or off depending on what you want to be 
turning on or off. Let's keep going here. We're almost done. It's a great kit, as you can tell, ton of stuff here available for us. Again, all under that $35 price tag. Now, this is a very interesting one. This is what they call a servo motor, which gives you more precise movement and positioning in the real world. This is a more precise motor. That's very interesting. I wouldn't have expected that one. So, and this looks like a small relay to me that you also get with the kit. Continuing on, we have a temperature or humidity module. This can detect the humidity or temperature. This is pretty cool, something to work with. As you can tell, it's very small, so it can be very discreet. You could put it anywhere you want. Now, I don't think it's industrial, so you're not gonna run it outside and get very cold temperatures or very hot temperatures out of it. It's probably gonna melt before it does that. But either way, a very nice uh, thing to do because it gives you a sense of how to use sensors in a circuit, along with a microcontroller that can read out information. We got two more little things in here. Let's see what else we got. We have a little potentiometer, I believe, which is missing the top here. Um, I think that fell out. I'll have to look for it. Um, not surprised, but um, you can tell it has a little rotary dial inside, which as it rotates, it changes the resistance up. So that's all the potentiometer is. Again, nice to give you varying control of resistance. And finally, what do we have here? I think this is an infrared receiver module as noted on the kit. And if I had to guess, it can see infrared and detect infrared. And that's really it. This is the entire Super Starter Kit from the Lego, the Uno R3 project. You can check this out in the description below if you want to purchase one. I'll put a link in there just so it's easier for you to find if this interests you with all the different components that come with it. Again, great for a digital electronics starter kit. One of the best in my opinion because it's economic as well as it has a lot of varying components which, which you can get some practicality using and building and following those projects. One thing I'll warn you about is it doesn't come with any capacitors and it doesn't come with any inductors. So again, we have LEDs. We have diodes, but I didn't see any mention of capacitors or inductors, so you won't be able to build any RLC circuits. Not that they're important to this type of starter kit. It's just something I noticed. I wouldn't really expect them to come in here, but hey, if you throw in a couple capacitors, a couple inductors, that's also nice because you could still use the breadboard and play around with them on your own accord if you wanted to, since those are also essential parts of circuit analysis, as well as being able to prototype your own boards. Well, that's about it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you like this kit? Are you thinking about getting one? What would you like to see in this kit that's missing? Do you have a suggestion for another kit? Again, let us know down below. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, post them down there too. Also, make sure to like the video and make sure to subscribe below. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.